Welcome back to Prince of the Microgreens. Uh, today we're going to be growing some dun pea. Uh, this is very, very easy grow. And that's kind of a trend um, as to my last few videos. Uh, I've been starting off with some of the easy stuff to get people kind of started and into microgreens, right? We don't want to just jump right into the, to the really hard, you know, crazy stuff to grow like, you know, beets and stuff like that. Stuff that's just a pain, I guess you can say. Um, so what we're gonna do here is um, if, as you can see, I have my pea. A lot of seed comes in pretty large bags and, and, and containers. And instead of kind of fiddling around with that, um, I've decided I went on to Amazon and I found some really nice, um, I think there's about two, two and a half gallon buckets. Um, they're the absolute perfect size. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's just beautiful, right? It's just keep and store all your, all your seed. Uh, I use this for pea, I use it for popcorn sunflower and my nasturtium seed as well. Um, I keep it right in here and I have um, these nice little scoops, right? And how, how easy it is. So uh, we're gonna zero the scale and we are going to use uh, 300 gram um, of seed. And we actually have to soak pea. So I use these little mason jars, which is, you know, work out to be pretty perfect. So I'll go ahead and guesstimate here, about 300 grams. that on there and that's 267 so just need a little bit more here 295 it's a little bad one there boom 300 grams of seed so after we put it in our mason jar we literally just take it and we would just fill it up with water right to the top. Put the lid on. And now, easy as that, we'll let it sit for anywhere between, uh, to be honest, eight to 12 hours. It doesn't matter so much. I've done it as early as, you know, seven hours and I've done it as late as 13, 14 hours because I forgot about it. <laughs> so we'll get back, we'll come back in about 12 hours and we'll go from there. All right, so we're back and it's been about 12 hours. Um, so we have uh, the pea that's been soaking for, again for about 12 hours. Uh, you can see how it's actually expanded quite a bit in the jar, um, but we're gonna go ahead and strain that now, um, and water it off a little bit um, just to get a little clean and then we'll put it on the medium and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna use this tray here just to kind of demonstrate here. So. Somewhere to dump this. Just dump all it out into the strainer. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rinse it down for a few seconds. Change this to soaker. go. Clean it all up there. All right. And basically it's just as easy as uh, just spreading it right on a medium here. All right. I just give it a little shake here. Beautiful. Drain it up a little bit. Nice and even. There we go. Looks great. Now again, we just give this a little misting and uh, when we miss, we want to make sure we give it enough water that it can last throughout um, germination and through blackout, just like most of other stuff that we grow here. You don't want to have to keep on lifting that tray up and uh, misting every day. That just 
It's a waste of time, and you don't need to do it. So got a nice good water. Should be pretty good. Excellent. Go ahead, put a tray on top. Weight down with a little pavement block here. 10, 15 pounds. All right, now that we got our block on, we're gonna go ahead, put this over on our blackout shelf here with all the rest of our greens. Of course, we're going to label it P. And this will sit on the shelf for about, I'd say two to three days in germination. Um, we won't touch it. Uh, it's got plenty of water in there that um, you know you don't need to peek in it every day. It should be no problem. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let sit that for a few days and uh, we'll come right back. Welcome back to day five of growing pea microgreens. So the morning of day one, we actually soaked our pea seed uh, for 12 hours. And then uh, the night of uh, day one, we went and uh, sowed our seed onto our tray here. Um, and then what we did was we put it in germination uh, for three days. Uh, and today's day number five. I'm going to take it out of germination, take the weight off for the first time. Again, we gave it enough water so we didn't have to keep lifting the tray, misting it, and so forth. We give it plenty of water before germination. Uh, that way you don't have to fiddle with it throughout the entire process. Um, so as you can see here, this, this looks perfect for germination. Um, all we're going to do today is just go ahead and put... Um, a black dome or black tray on top, uh, and then put it, introduce it to the blackout. So just literally like so. Again, we have, um, we used our nice taller black trays to keep it nice and dark, and at the same time, give it a little room to grow and blackout. So we just put that on like so, and just introduce it to our shelf here. And then we'll come back in about two days after it's um, had a proper amount of time in blackout to get nice and tall. And then we'll introduce it to light. See you soon. Okay, welcome back to day six of our Dun P microgreen grow. Um, so for the first day, we actually soaked our seed 12 hours um, and then followed by uh, sowing that night. Um, and then the next uh, couple days, we actually uh, put it in germination. Um, pea stays in germination for probably a day more than most microgreens. I usually stick it in for about three days. Um, today's day six. Um, we've had this in uh, blackout for uh, just over a day now. Um, but but pea usually doesn't need to uh, stay in back blackout too long. You can actually introduce it to the light a little early, and it's not going to affect it. It's going to grow nice and tall. Um, without any issues at all. So we'll go ahead and take this out of blackout now. And as you can see, that's actually already a really good length. Um, we wouldn't really need to go too much more than this. Another day would be nonsense for, for Den P. Um, like I said, this will grow just fine in the light. Um, but as you can see, that's, that's, that's a wonderful length right here. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and just kind of lift this up. Um, just to get a good feel for its weight uh, with the water. We still, I can feel the medium still a little wet just, just by the weight of this. Um, but we'll go ahead and give it a little bit of nutrient water um, for the first night here. So, again, I only do nutrient water every other day or so, and we just do regular water. Um, you know, other than that, uh, I check check all of the microgreens every morning and every night to make sure um, that they have enough water in them um, just by lifting up the tray to see how light they feel. I'll put about a cup of water in here for the for the pea. Uh, pea actually grows pretty well without having to water it a ton, uh, believe it or not. You, you don't need to uh, to really overwater pea. Uh, radish grows really tall, much like pea. Um, but radish really sucks up that water. Uh, pea, not so much. Um, I can actually water pea and not have to touch it for sometimes two days or so. So, um, But yeah, now that we've gone ahead and water it, we're just going to introduce it to light. Um, and we'll see what it, go, you know, what it does from there. Uh, go ahead and put this on the, tr uh, on the shelf here. Beautiful. Goes great there. 
and uh, we'll, go, we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. All right, see you then. Okay, welcome back to day number seven of our done pea grow. Um, so actually late last night, uh, we just took this out of blackout um, and just overnight, you can see that it's already exploded. Um, they, they've, come, they've really stood themselves up um, and they look great. They've already grown an inch, I would say, in the last 24 hours or so. Um, these pea microgreens really, they grow very fast once you get them out of the, uh, the germination phase. They, they tend to take a, a few days to germinate. After that, they just explode right up. Um, I would say that we're going to be harvesting this most likely in two days. Um, we still have a little bit of, of time for it to really start getting those leaves um, and the, the tendrils that the pea uh, greens tend to get. Um, but uh, it, it happens very fast, happens very quickly. So we'll keep an eye on this. I'm going to lift it up right now. Um, we're going to give it a little bit of water, not too much. There's still the, the mediums uh, has, has quite a bit just by feeling it. So we'll go ahead and do that. We already gave it nutrients yesterday, so it doesn't need too many more nutrients. So we just give it a nice little water here for the roots. Not too much, that's all it needs. And then we'll go ahead and put this back in a light and uh, we'll go from there. Um, one thing I wanted to say is, is that, you know, when growing pea microgreens, you don't, I personally don't like to cut them um, when they're too tall. Um, I like to cut them about a day earlier than most people cut them um, because they kind of get a little fibrous. Um, I, I think of it almost like, uh, uh, like celery, right? And when you bite into celery, you get the, you know, the fibers of celery. Um, pea tends to get like that, except even more so. Um, so what we do is we cut them a little bit before they're 100% ready, in my opinion. And, and then what that does is it softens them up a little bit. Um, and then we don't cut them super low either. The lower they go, uh, the more fibrous that gets um, closer to the... Uh, um, to the seed down here. So um, I kind of like to come up about maybe half an inch to an inch and that's when we'll start to cut. But we'll get to that in a few days here. Um, other than that, we'll introduce it back to light. And we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. All right, see you shortly. Hello again, welcome back to day number eight of our Dunn Pea Microgreen Grow. Um, our, our Dunn Pea is looking really good today. Uh, you can tell that how fast it's really growing and how it's taking form, taking shape. Uh, you, you really have the leaves starting to come out right here on the side. I would say that we really only need, um, I'm going to say maybe two more days. Um, sometimes I go, like I said, I, I'll go sooner just because when you clip them, um, they tend to be a little bit softer as opposed to when you go a little bit longer and more fibrous. Um, but I also like to harvest closer to uh, the farmer's market, um, which is Saturday. Today is Tuesday. Um, so I'd like to try to at least push these to uh, possibly Thursday if possible. That way I harvested, you know, about a day and a half before the farmer's market. They're still nice and fresh. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and check, probably use a little bit of water. We're gonna do nutrient water today. So we'll do that really quick. Not too much. There's still a good amount of water in here I can feel. So we're going to go ahead and just give it about a cup. Keep those roots nice and moist and happy. And other than that, we're just going to put it right back on the shelf. And we'll come back tomorrow. Okay, welcome back to day number nine of our Dun Pea Grow. Uh, this is... <laughs> This is incredible looking. Uh, this is this has grown wonderfully over the last couple of days. Uh, it's grown really fast. Once you introduce it to light, I'd say only about three days before you know you start getting to this point. Um, like I said before, we like to harvest about a day earlier than than most, um, just to keep it nice and, and soft. Um, but this is just about there. You probably could harvest at this phase if you really wanted to. Um, I like to go one more day than this uh, just because uh, the, the tendrils aren't quite there yet. Um, you know, those, those little stringy pieces that kind of come off a little bit. Um, this, this is coming out great though. I'm going to go ahead and kind of lift up. I'm going to give it a little bit of water. We'll just go ahead and give it a little bit of nutrient water today too. Um, I don't want to give it too much 
uh, because tomorrow I am going to harvest. And being that we're going to harvest tomorrow, we don't want the medium too soaking wet. Because what winds up happening is if the medium is soaking wet throughout the course of today and, and tomorrow, um, when we harvest, I give it maybe like three quarters of a cup, somewhere around there. Um, but when we harvest, we'll notice that the, uh, the greens will actually be moist and, and somewhat wet. And you do not want microgreens wet at all when you're harvesting. It's very important that, um, you know, that, that doesn't happen. So what we like to do is, is usually a day before we harvest, we start turning on a lot of fans. We don't water quite as much. And we tr really try to, to push airflow through these as much as possible um, and get them to a point where they're very dry with, without being, you know, dr we don't want them to dry up, of course. Um, but we just want them dry enough that when we harvest, um, there's going to be no moisture, um, especially when we're putting them in these uh, in the containers that we put them in. So we just watered. Uh, we'll put it back on the shelf for one more day. Come back and we'll see you tomorrow for harvest day. Okay, welcome back to day number 10, which is harvest day. Uh, we have our done pea here that, as of yesterday, we didn't quite have the tendrils that we wanted on it, so we let it go another day. Um, and, and today, I can really see them. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. So today, we're gonna go ahead and harvest, but first, we need a few things, obviously. Um, so I have my scale over here. Um, this will allow me to go um, and uh, I put our uh, containers here right onto the scale and we can measure uh, the exact amount that goes into the container so we can package it up for the farmers market. Um, I usually don't go directly into a bowl. Uh, I, I think it's kind of a waste because I'm gonna know how much I harvested anyway just by knowing how many containers um, you know I, I was able to fill and, and so forth so I can do the math myself. When you put it into a bowl first, it kind of makes it all messy. You'll see when I harvest, there's actually a pretty decent way of doing it um, to make it really clean and neat for your packaging. So we'll get into that. We also have um, some labels that we have created. Um, we actually have these labels created on Fiverr by somebody. I provide them with all the information, pictures, everything, um, and they made these great labels. And I have an Epson label printer. Um, it's a little expensive. It's about $1,400, I believe, for a label printer, but my gosh, it's the greatest thing in the world. Um, it spits out labels just like this, ready to go, all cut, done. Um, gives me a stack, and so, uh, and then what I do is I actually go into the computer, and I'll actually type in here, um, you know, four ounces. Um, I'll type in here the date it was harvested, and that way when I hit print on a label, Boom, it just prints everything out. I don't need anything in hand handwriting. Um, it's extremely professional. I even went and got barcodes, UPC codes um, online and bought a bunch of them specifically for our product and put them on each individual label as well. So when you walk into a supermarket or so forth and you wanna try to um, you know, get into a supermarket, um, you, know, you have the, the UPCs ready to go for them so they can program it into their register system. So, um, we can t we're we're going to talk more about labels um, in the future, uh, in in another video, and, and how to how to really do that from the ground up, I guess you can say, and how to put that together. Um, but for now, um, so we have our labels. We also have so these are really neat. These are, this is food safe packaging. Uh, this is basically sucks up the humidity in the container. Uh, and why that's important is because uh, if your microgreens get wet or moist inside the container their shelf life goes down considerably. Uh, so by putting this at the bottom of the container, it really helps to kind of absorb the moisture in the container while it's sitting in the refrigerator. Uh, and they're food safe. Uh, you just put them right at the bottom of the container like so. Um, and then you uh, just cut, put right into the container, close right up. It sits right at the bottom just like that. And uh, people have no taken a notice to it that we do do that and really like that because it really prolongs to life. I'll put a link down below in the description box uh, on where to get these. Uh, I think they're very important. They're very cheap too. Uh, I think I got a pack of about 6,000 of them for about $250-ish. Now, mind you, 6,000, that's 6,000 packages of microgreens. Uh, so they go a long way. So definitely worth it, in my, my opinion. So we will get started harvesting 
and I'm going to do four ounces per container for pea because they are so big. When when we do two ounces, we usually do that for for uh, smaller microgreens such as broccolis and um, you know kohlrabi, spicy mixes, you know, stuff where that's a little bit shorter. Uh, once you get to this big stuff like this, we tend to go directly into four ounce and, and give our customer the best bang for the bunk when it comes to that. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the scale here. We have one of our packages here that we do four ounces into. This is a little bit bigger of a package. Uh, First, we need to turn our scale on with the package on, with our, uh, that way it zeroes out the scale. And then when we start cutting here, I usually like to come up about an inch or so. If you get too close to the bottom, uh, it does get a little fibrous. Uh, so the higher you go, the softer it's going to get, just like so. And we just put right in the container, just like that. Thirty-four. We're going to go all the way up to about 112 for four ounces. And I can usually go back and forth here. There you go. Just back and forth as we sit here, which means I have uh, the leaf facing left and they have it facing right and left and right. And it kind of just staggers back and forth to the top until it's nice and full. That's right at 111, just a tad bit more. Boom, 114, we're good. As long as you go over that 112, you never wanna short a customer. Um, and then we just push it down a little bit here, like so. Take our label, put it right on it like that, boom we have our container of microgreens. So we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. A couple times here. Okay. And we usually sell our uh, Dun P four ounce containers uh, for ten dollars, um, if we do have a two ounce container of Dun P, uh, actually, you know what? I'm sorry, we don't sell for ten. We sell for eight, because uh, P is so easy to grow and it's cheap to grow. Um, so we sell our, our four ounces uh, for eight dollars, and we sell actually our two ounces for five dollars. So you do get a deal when you go with the bigger container. Um, and for those that are actually selling microgreens yourselves and, and trying to get into a business, just you know, think about it this way. Uh, it's, it's less packaging. This, this packaging is a little expensive because this is biodegradable. It's plastic free. So each container um, is roughly about 50 cents as opposed to a plastic container, which might be anywhere between you know, 20 to 30 cents. So it, it's quite a bit more for these. Um, and when I don't need to use more labels, I don't need to use more packaging, I don't need to use more um, of these food packs, these uh, the humidity absorber packs, whatever they're called, you know, that's, that's more money, more profit. So if you can get people to buy in bulk in one container versus two, um, I cut them a nice price deal for sure. Everybody wins, basically. You sell more greens, you earn more money, and you use less packaging. So just food for thought there. The food pack there. And as you can see, we're about halfway done, maybe a tad bit more. And we've got two pretty big packages here already. Uh, so if, I'm, if, if I can get about four containers out of this, um, then I'm doing about, so $8 times four is what, 32? So I'm doing about $32 for one tray of, of Dun P greens here. So. Kind of get in the way here. Okay. 
Usually if I have any extra microgreens, if it's just a little bit extra um, and it won't fit into a container, uh, then what I'll do is, or I should say, if it is a little bit extra, then it will fit into a container and I'll give all my clients just a little bit more. So this is a little bit much, so I'm gonna take this out here. I'm gonna put, put it aside really quick. This is usually what I do when I overdo it. Take a little bit out. Boom, 112, e, perfect. Perfect, perfect. I try not to pinch the leaves on the side because it, it looks ugly. <laughs> the leaves and the stalks here. Try to get it perfect. So like I was saying, um, if there's a little bit left, and I'll shove it into another container, if there's a lot left, then what I'll do is I'll just put it aside for myself. And every once in a while, I'll actually do a mix of different greens into one container and do kind of like a little sample pack. Um, and I'll actually give that to some of my clients that uh, buy from me quite regularly. I like to try to take care of them and you know, do nice things for them and give them little sample packs to try out of stuff they may have they might have not tried yet you know things along that line you always got to think about the the customer and make them happy and um, that's always been our goal so friends don't fire their friends the way i see it hundred here. This one's going to be a little close. So we'll make sure we get everything we can out of it and we might be able to hit that 112 mark here. So I'm gonna, I do this actually quite often. We get really close sometimes on a container and we can usually get it pretty darn close to that, that 112. If we don't hit that 112 then we can't sell the container because, uh, you know, obviously you can't short a customer as well. So you got to be aware of that. Try not to do that. But as you can see, if we do pick up all of our scraps here, we shouldn't have a problem hitting that mark. You just need to go back and make sure you get everything. That all adds up. Sure that scale doesn't turn off. Sometimes the scale will auto turn off on me when I'm doing this. <laughs> Not the reway. <laughs> so this might do it. Look at that. 110. We're gonna make it, guys. We are gonna make it. A little bit here. Like flailing my knife around. I'm gonna cut myself. So All right, we have done it. We hit 112, look at that. And we cleaned up our tray and everything. So this is great. So we're gonna go ahead and lock that. Put our label on. And there you have it. Okay, and there you have it. We have Nice, beautiful, done pea, all packaged up, ready to go in our packages here, four ounce packages uh, with our labels uh, and everything ready to go for the market. So that's, that's just about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. All right, we'll see you next grow. Peter here from Princeton Microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment box. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.